This week's episode is about how to install a sounder GPS unit onto your jet ski. If you're a serious fisherman like I am, then you'll know that the sounder GPS is one of the most important pieces of equipment you can have on the ski. For that reason, I'm going with the Lawrence HDS5. You can see everything in the box that it comes with here, but we're going to be focusing on just these few items uh, today, which is all we're going to need to complete the install in addition to another transducer which I'll show you shortly. Okay, so the transducers. This is a traditional transducer which comes in the box which you'll all be familiar with. It's basically a skimmer, called a skimmer, fits on a little bracket and gets mounted to the rear of the ski. Now the problem with that on a jet ski is, is that jet skis are often pulled ashore onto beaches, sometimes they can be a little bit shelly or rocky, uh, but quite often the bottom of the ski will be hitting the ground at times. So that can damage the skimmers, uh, so I'm not going to run with that. What I am going to run with is an EMR P79. It's an in-hull transducer, so what that means is it goes inside the hull. There's no holes or anything, we don't need to screw any brackets onto the back of the ski creating holes. I'm not really a big fan of that but it goes inside the hull, it can see through the hull. It's important to find a, a place of solid glass that it can see straight through, and we'll look into that a bit more as we go. Uh, but it goes inside the hull, and it has a variable angle mounting. You can see that it's on an angle, and depending on how you fit it, determines the angle that it sits inside the hull. It's a very good transducer, sits inside what's called a, a base flange. The base flange gets siliconed in, and then this just clips into it. Once you've decided on the type of transducer you want to use, we then need to find a suitable location to install it. If you're using one of the ones that come in the box, it just gets installed on the outside of the ski. Quite a few holes to drill, so we're not doing that type of transducer. We're doing the in-hull transducer, and there's a few things that we need to pay attention to when using that type of transducer. Firstly, we need to get it so that it is perfectly flat. It must be perfectly flat. Uh, pointing straight down at the seabed. So if your hull is on a slope, that transducer needs to counteract that slope so it's pointing straight down. And that's what the little base flange does uh, with this transducer. Secondly, it needs to be able to see through the hull. That means there can't be air bubbles, there can't be two skins with air in between, there must be just one skin of fiberglass. It can see through fiberglass no problem, but we need to find an area within the hull where it can see through. The third point is we want to get it as far back in the ski as possible. The very back of the ski very rarely comes out of the water, so that's the bit that's going to be getting the best sounding, if you like, as you're running. The further forward you go up the ski, the more it's going to be out of the water. So we're going to have a look for a location down the back of the ski in the Yamaha FXHO. There's a nice little spot for it. Some other skis you have to fit it in front of the engine. But in the Yamaha FXHO, perfect little spot down the back. So now we know where we're going to install the base flange, all we need to do is put it in. That's a very simple task, just take the base flange, run some silicon right around the bottom of that flange and make sure you use sufficient amounts of silicon because it needs to be completely watertight. We're going to fill that base flange with a liquid a little bit further down the track. So lots of silicon around there and press it into that hull. Make sure you've got the angle right, press it firmly into the hull and we'll move on to the rest of the task. Okay, what you then need to do is take the lid off of the uh, little storage compartment just up the front of the jet ski. You take it off by just depressing the pins and popping them out. They just slide straight out nice and easy and the hatch will lift straight off. Once you've got it off, you can lay the uh, template over the top of it. So the template, this template here you can download from our website or our Facebook page and you just need to cut the centre part out of it and once that's cut out, you stick it on to the, the hatch and mark it out with a felt tip pen or some type of, of permanent marker. And that's going to be the lines that you need to go by to cut out. Now when, if you're using this template, once you've printed it out, you need to check very carefully that it's printed out to scale. So put a ruler on the dimensions down the side of the template and measure them. You can check that one that says 128.3 millimetres. When you put your ruler on that measurement, it should be on 128 millimetres. So that's very important. If it doesn't measure that, do not use the template. So once it's marked out, 
all you need to do is uh, use a big drill bit or a hole saw. You need to basically make a, a hole in each corner with a drill bit or a hole saw to, to set the corners effectively. Once you've done that, you can then use a grinder if you're careful and you can grind out the, uh, along the lines to cut that little centerpiece out or you can use a little hand saw. Take a hacksaw blade off, slide it down through the hole that you've made with the drill bit and just cut along the lines. Okay, so now that we've got the hole cut, what we need to do is drop that sounder in there, check that it fits. Once we know that it fits, we need to get it ready for siliconing in. So I'm going to run some masking tape. I've run it right around the edge of the sounder itself and I've left a little tag on the end so it's easy to pull off at the end. And I've also run masking tape right around the edges of the hatch. So it's about probably six or seven mils back from the edge of the hatch. I've put the sounder in the hatch and then taped it up after that. So that's going to give us some really nice lines. It's going to look nice once it's all siliconed in and finished. So now we're ready to start the siliconing process. Okay, so we've let all that silicon set overnight. It's now time to fit the transducer. What we need to do is we need to fill that base flange with a little bit of antifreeze. And what that does is that means when we click the actual transducer unit itself in, it'll be in a liquid and that gives it a nice uh, constant signal all the way down to the water. So I've got a little bottle of just a little water bottle which I've part filled with antifreeze. Antifreeze is what they recommend to use. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to fill up the base flange with it. Okay, so I only need to about half fill the base flange, but once it's got that, uh, that amount in it, just enough, it's probably going to overflow. You're better to have it too much than not enough, so you don't get any air bubbles in there. You don't want air bubbles in there. So once I've got enough in there, I'm going to take the transducer, and I'm just going to put it and click it into place. Once that's done, while everything's drying, all that's left to do is to run the cables up through the hull. I'm going to fix the power cable to the battery. Pretty easy, just put a little terminal on there, screw it down nice and tight, make sure it's nice and tight. Then we're going to run that positive through a fuse and then through a separate switch. That allows us to isolate the unit from the battery so that it's not on all the time. Even when the unit's off, we still don't want power running to it. So I have a little switch on that which isolates it. The fuse which comes in the box, that's important as well. So make sure that that is also in the sequence of cable. You can hook all that up, run the wires up to the front, and all we need to do is make a hole in the bottom of the, the box for the wires to come up through. <laughs> 